I recently made a video showing the difference between the RTX 3050 and RTX 3050 time. If you are interested to see the results, click the link in the video descriptions or click the card in the top right corner. Some of you left a comment in the previous video asking for a comparison between the RTX 3050 Ti and the GTX 1660 Ti that was released just over two years ago. Is newer always better? Stay tuned to find out. NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti Mobile, released in April of 2019, was the middle child between the entry-level GTX 1650 Ti and the high-end options incorporating the first-generation ray-tracing technologies. The card had a lot of similarities with the RTX 2060. Both cards has a 192-bit memory interface width and had 6 gigabytes of dedicated video RAM. When the GTX 1660 Ti was initially released, it had just a small price gap to the RTX 2060 which put the 1660 tie in an awkward position on the market. For just $100 more, you could get the RTX 2060 with enhanced hardware ray tracing capabilities. Fast forward two years, NVIDIA released the RTX 3050 family, which brought ray tracing to entry level systems. The RTX 3050 tie boost more CUDA cores than the GTX 1660 tie. 2560 versus 1536, and two years of manufacturing advancements. However, it does come with a reduced video RAM, having just 4 gigabytes versus 6 gigabytes on the 1660 Ti. How does this translate into raw gaming performance? As the GTX 1660 Ti did not support hardware enhanced ray tracing, we are purely going to make comparisons in games that does not support ray tracing in a non-DLSS environment. As the GTX 1660 Ti is going end of life, to be replaced by RTX 3050 Ti in the product segment, the systems I will be comparing will have different processors. The GTX 1660 Ti can often be found in systems that uses AMD's Ryzen 4000 series mobile CPUs, or Intel's 10th gen processors, while the RTX 3050 Ti will be paired with AMD 5000 series or Intel's 11th gen solutions. For this reason, this will not be a direct apples to apples comparison, but since many of you requested this video, it may still be worthwhile to consider between these two, especially if you are purchasing the 1660 Ti from second hand markets. I will be comparing the new RTX 3050 Ti with two older systems. Last year's HP Omen 15 with Ryzen or 54600H and ROG Strix G15 with Intel's 10th Gen Comet Lake i7. The generation on generation improvements from the 5000 series to the 4000 series is between 10 to 15% in synthetic benchmarks. This will give you a good idea of what to expect. All games are tested at 1080p Ultra, with VSync disabled. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the game's built-in benchmark software. At 1080p and Ultra settings, the newer RTX 3050 Ti system scored 41 frames per second, compared to 47 frames per second for the HP and 46 frames per second with the ROG G15. Assassin's Creed does not use up more than 4 gigabytes of video RAM that some people think would be a potential bottleneck. Batman Arkham Knight is an older title from 2015. With the built-in PC performance benchmark, the 3050 Ti scored an average of 65 frames per second which is just one frame per second more than the HP and two frames per second more than the laptop from Asus. Deus Ex Mankind Divided also has a built-in benchmark tool. In this title, the 3050 Ti scored 73 frames per second versus 58 frames per second for the Omen 15 and 61 frames per second for the 2020 edition of the G15. F1 2018 
is a fabulous racer made by Codemasters. The 3050 Ti got 109 frames per second in the built-in benchmark. That's 10 frames per second ahead of the Omen, and 15 frames per second more than the G15. Far Cry 5 scored 86 frames per second with the RTX 3050 Ti, just ahead of the HP Omen at 81 frames per second, and the G15 at 79 frames per second. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested using Ultra Settings. This game can be very heavy on the graphics and can use more than 6 gigabytes of video RAM. Here, we start to observe a very interesting change. RTX 3050 Ti received 66 frames per second in the benchmark test, and it is beaten by the 1660 Ti with 6 gigabytes of dedicated video RAM. Total War, Three Kingdoms was tested at Ultra Settings. RTX 3050 Ti scored 49 frames per second in the benchmarks. HP Omen 15 received 45 frames per second, and the ROG Strix G15, with an Intel CPU, scored 49 frames per second. I wanted to see how a slightly faster CPU would improve things, so I benchmarked the 2020 edition of the Asus A15. This system runs the R74800H, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 1660 Ti, also at 80 watts. With this system, Assassin's Creed improved to 48 frames per second, not a huge difference versus the R5, but still a minor gain. Far Cry 5 improved to 86 frames per second with the R7 CPU, matching the result of the RTX 3050 Ti. Horizon Zero Dawn was tested using the game's built-in benchmark tool. At 1080p highest settings, the 1660 Ti was still matching that of the RTX 3050 Ti, even with the older processor. In Metro Exodus, the result slightly favors the RTX 3050 Ti. However, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this was again reversed where we see the newer system gets solidly beaten by the 1660 Ti. Total War Three Kingdoms Again, we can see that a faster CPU does have a small impact on overall system performance, and the 1660 Ti can definitely match the RTX 3050 Ti if it had a faster CPU. Gears 5 saw the system slightly favor RTX 3050 Ti, while in Gears Tactics the results were once again reversed. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, the 1660 Ti trumps the RTX 3050 Ti, while both GPUs has the same rated wattage at 80 watts. The cards were neck to neck in Red Dead Redemption 2, but the 6GB video RAM of the 1660 Ti will certainly make a difference if you decide to up the settings. Watch Dogs Legions is a graphically intensive game, and you would need an RTX 3060 level GPU if you wish to play at 1080p ultra settings with smooth frame rates. Again, the RTX 3050 Ti is hampered by the limited video RAM for heavier titles, and the 1660 Ti edges out the win. In summary, the competition between 1660 Ti and RTX 3050 Ti is a close match. Averaged out across all games tested, there is basically no difference in terms of gaming performance at 1080p. It just depends a lot on the specific game. Some games performs better with the RTX 3050 Ti, while others will do better on the 1660 Ti. With that said, all titles tested was done without DLSS or ray tracing enabled. While ray tracing is slightly gimmicky based off my personal opinion and doesn't really provide any great benefit or even visible upgrade to my eyes. However, DLSS does provide boosted frame rates. Enabling DLSS is only possible with RTX graphics. In games like Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone, you can expect a gain of 10 to 15 frames per second with DLSS enabled. Click the card above for more detailed explanations.
Now to my recommendations. If you can find a GTX 1660 Ti system for a lower price, and you are a casual gamer who doesn't care about ray tracing features, I'd recommend getting the 1660 Ti with 6GB video RAM. If the price between RTX 3050 Ti and the 1660 Ti is somewhat similar, and you are mostly playing esports games like Fortnite, Call of Duty Warzone, CSGO, or Rainbow Six Siege, I'd spring for the RTX 3050 Ti, as these are mostly CPU bound. You will get higher FPS with the newer processors that the RTX 3050 Ti are shipped with. Check out my other comparison video of the RTX 3050 family, links in the video description. I hope this video helps you in your purchase decision. It took me a lot of time preparing and making this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed the content and what you have learned. A sub to the channel would be massively appreciated as well. Feel free to share my video on any social platform. Let me know where you are watching this video from and if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments.